Hello everyone, welcome to the Makri Virtual. Hope you are doing good. Today I am going to continue with your same module that is a database design concepts and the new chapter that is a chapter number 8. In the last class we have uh, finished with chapter number 7 that is a, uh, mm, uh, that is a, your relational diagrams or we can say the um, diagrammatical representation of the ER model that is a 7 chapter that we have finished that is a relational or the database design or how to design the ER model. So let's take a quick review what we have covered in the last class and then move to start, uh, today's topic that is chapter number 8. Right. So let's start with the previous class session. In the last class we have studied about the ER diagram that is what are the ER diagram that is used. So as we saw uh, ER diagram can uh, be used to express the overall logical structure of a database graphically. So with the help of ER diagram we can express the overall logical structure of a database what, are the, what is the logical structure of a database and how we can represent the database graphically. And ER diagrams are simple and clear qualities that may well account in a large part of the widespread use of the ER model. So ER diagrams are simple diagrams and the clear diagrams that is they can represent the diagram or they can represent the graphs entity in a clear format in a systematic format. Now what is the basic structure of the ER diagram that is available? These are the basic structures that is available like this one. There is a rectangle, diamond, divide that divides the various triangles. Then we have studied about the mapping cardinality. There are uh, four um, um, relationship between the entities like one to one, one to many, many to many and many to one. Then we talked about the complex attribute that is what are the complex attributes and how to use them in the uh, ER notation. So complex attributes like uh, with a, which have a multiple attributes like first name, middle name, initial name, last name. That is a attribute or composite attribute is a name that contains three parts first name, middle name, last name. Then uh, there is a role that is what is the use of the role uh, that is used to label the diagram that is used to indicate the diagram that is the course ID and the prerequisite ID between the course entity set and the prerequisite entity set. Then non-binary bin relationship sets that is what is the non-binary relationship set that is available in the ER model. Then uh, we have also talked about the weak entity sets. Uh, weak entity sets are the we can say the group of the entity that are uh, weak part or that is of weak part that is uh, that entity that is depend on other entity that is uniquely identifying by the course identifier semester E and the section identifier that is related to the course entity that is related to the relationship that the entity does. Now observe that the information in the uh, section course is redundant since section already has an attribute course ID which identifies a course with which the section is related. Now one option is to reduce the redundancies to uh, make the relationship and to make the relationship between the section and the course that is implicit in the nature. Uh, then uh, how to convert the strong entity into weak entity or weak entity into strong entity. So if we, if we add sufficient attributes like um, primary key like other attribute that is required that makes the weak entity set into the strong entity set. Then what is the uh, discrimination that we have discussed in the last class? Uh, then uh, ER diagram that we have discussed about the uh, university diagram or university for the university, there is a uh, ER diagram that is available. Then we talked about the next topic that is a reduction to the relational schema. That is how to reduce to the relational schema or what are the various relational schema that is a logical design of the relation that is available that is a reduction to the relational schema. So we can represent a database that conforms to the ER database schema by a collection of relation schema. So there are multiple relation schema that is available. There are multiple logical designs that is available for the ER diagrams. For each entity set and for each relationship set in the database design, there is a unique relation schema. There is a unique, we can say the logical design for the table that is used to assign the name of the corresponding entity set or relationship set. That is how to reduce or how to represent the attributes a relationship with the help of the entity set or relationship set. Both the ER model and the relational database model are abstract. So both the model that is the ER model and their, that is the database model are the abstract model that is used. Now how to represent a strong entity set with the simple attribute. So if I want to represent the strong entities that is represented with the help of the simple attribute that is uh, denote or that denotes a feature of the entity. Then we have discussed how to represent a strong entity set with complex attributes. That is the attributes that has a multiple part that is known as the complex attributes. 
so how to represent them for example an attribute that is a name that has three parts that is a first name middle name and the uh, last name that is a complex attribute uh, that is used to show the strong entity sets then how to represent the weak entity set that is also represented by using the various attributes like a1 a2 am and b1 b2 the primary key consists of the primary key of the entity set course along with the discrimination of the section that is the section id semester and the year then uh, next is representation of the relationship sets that is how to re uh, represent the relationship sets so uh, this is a method how to represent them that is what are the various relationship and how to represent by using the union sign then uh, we have discussed about how to uh, reduce the or redundancy of the schemas that is uh, what are the various duplicate schemas that is available in the er model or what are the various uh, duplicate model that is used in the er model so that is the next topic that we have discussed uh, so uh, this is whenever we apply the relational schema whenever we use the relational schema there is a concept there is a term that is lying that is a redundancy of the schema that is a duplication of the schemas that is also available so relationship set linking a uh, uh, weak entity set into the high or uh, more entity set or into the So the weak entity set is depend on the strong entity set by the relationship set set course. This is a section course. This is a one of the example that is discussed. And the primary key that is used in the section is the course ID, section ID, semester and the year. And the primary key of the course is the course ID. In general, the schema for the relationship that is available. that is linked with the strong entity set is redundant and does not need to be present in the relational database design that is based upon the ER model. Then we have discussed uh, what are the various combinations of schemas or what are the various logical designs of the schemas or what are the various logical designs that is available in the ER model. That is, a, that is a combination of the schemas. That is how to combine multiple schemas or how to design the multiple database in a one database. That is a combination of various schemas. these are the various department that we have discussed then we have discussed about the er diagrams issues or what is the uh, issues that is available in the entity relationship design issues that is the use of the entity set versus attributes that is what is the usage of the entity set what is the usage of the entity uh, demand then uh, what are the various alternative that is used for adding the phones and uh, how to use the relationship set that is also available then uh, how to or uh, what is the usage of the relationship set that is available in the ER diagrams this is a diagrammatical representation that is the replacement of the takes by the registration and two relationship sets then binary versus the NRA relationship set that what is the difference between the binary array and the NRA relationship sets there is a ternary relationship there is a binary relationship that is available in ER models then uh, placement of relationship attribute that is how to use or what are the various placement that is available in the relationship attributes then, uh, we have also uh, talked about the what are the extended features of the er model like specialization generalization so we have discussed about the specialization we have discussed about the generalization then uh, there is a attribute inheritance that is a uh, how to create the higher level entities or how to create the low level entities from the high level entities that is known as the attribute inheritance that is attributes are inherited from other entities then what are the various constraints that is available on the generalization that is one of the condition defined one is the user defined so these are the various uh, constraints that is available then this
relation schema that is how to reduce the relation schema that is available by using the generalization by using the aggregation by using the demand so then this is the representation of the aggregation that is how to represent the aggregation in a systematic manner in a diagrammatical manner then what are the various alternative notation for modeling the data these are the alternative notation for the different attribute for the different notations right then we will discuss about the UML that is the important part that is the standard that is defined or that is worked under the OMG that is the object management group that is used to specify the various components of the software system that is what are the various specification that is available in the software systems and that includes class diagram use case diagram activity diagram and the implementation diagrams then uh, what are the various other aspects of the database design that is used so what are the various aspects of database design like data constraints and the relational database design uh, usage requirement that is queries and the performances what are the throughput and what are the various output scenarios then data flow or the workflow that is how the data will be flowed and how the, how the work will be flowed that is the data flow and the workflow then we also talked about the summary uh, that is what is the summary or what is the what we have discussed in the this chapter that is a seven chapter uh, now next move to the next chapter that is chapter number eight that is the today's topic so let's move to the chapter number eight quickly so let's move to the chapter number eight that is a relational database design that is how to design the database in a relation form or how to re design the relational database or relational databases right so just uh, just take uh, i'm just coming within two minutes right start with the chapter number eight that is a relational database design so in this chapter we studied about how to design the relational database that is how to represent in a, a diagrammatical metal uh, manner that is what are the various relational databases or what are the various uh, databases that is represented in the form of the table that is a relational database design so in this chapter we consider the problem of designing a schema for a relational database Many of the issues in doing so are similar to design the issues that we consider in the chapter number 7 using the UI diagram. In general, uh, what is the role of the relational model? That is, is to generate a set of relation schemas that allows us to store the information without unnecessary redundancy. That is, there is no duplication of data. We can simply store the databases. We can simply give the databases, explain the databases that is in the form of the table. That is accomplished by designing a schema that is appropriate normal form. So there is a uh, designing of the schema, designing of the table, designing of the structure that is appropriate in terms of the uh, normal form or there is a proper norm form, normal form that is available that is accomplished by designing the schemas. To determine whether a relation schema is one of the desired level normal form, we need information about the real world scenario that we are modeling with the database. So in order to design the relation model, there is a main thing is that there is no duplication of data, there is no redundancy. So uh, how to how to make them or how to uh, take information that the data is desirable and there are proper normal form of the database that is modeled with the database. Some of the information that is exist in a well-designed ER model, but additional information about the enterprises may be needed as well also. In this chapter, we introduce a formal approach to relational database design based on the notation on the functional dependency. So in this chapter, we talked ab talked about the what are the various functional dependency what are the relational database design that is based on the notation of the function dependency now we then define the normal form that is what are the various normal form that is available in terms of the functional dependency and the other types of data dependency first however we view the problem of relational design from the standpoint of the schemas that is derived from a given entity relationship design that is available in the er model now uh, first topic is what are the various features of good relational design that is uh, uh, how or what we can say that it is a good relational design that is a good relational design form so our study of entity relationship design in chapter 7 provides an excellent starting point for creating a relational database design so when we talked about the good relationship design or when we talked about the entity relationship design uh, that we talked about in the last chapter that is gives a starting point how to create a uh, relational database design we saw in uh, section 7.6 that it is possible to generate a set of relation schemas directly from the ER design so we can represent uh, relation schemas or we can represent the uh, ER model in the in the relation schemas in the 
uh, table that is represent obviously the goodness or badness of the resulting set of schemas that is what is good and what is bad in the resulting schemas that is what is available in the schemas that depends on how good the er model was in first place later in this chapter we will also precise how to access the desirable of a collection of the relation schema however we can go a long way towards a good design using concepts we have studied for the ease of the reference we repeat the schemas for the university database in figure 8.1 this is the 8.1 that is the schema for the university database just go through with the database or this database of the university because uh, we are using this uh, database in this chapter also that is chapter number 8 Uh, so this is the schema for the university database this is a classroom then there is a building room number capacity so in a classroom that is a table there are three parts there are three uh, we can say the fields that is available one is a building one is a room number one is the capacity and the building and the room number are the uh, primary keys that is available in the classroom table then there is a department and the primary key is department name then there is a building there is a budget then there is a course that is a course id Title, department name, credits, and course ID is the primary key. Then again, there is an instructor ID name, department name, salary. That is, ID is the primary key, department name, and the salary, and the name of the instructor also. Then there is a section. And then there are uh, four uh, primary keys. That is, the course ID, section ID, semester, year. Then building room number, time slot ID. Then teaches, and then ID, course ID, section ID, semester, year. These are all are the primary keys. then student only the id is the primary key then takes that have id course id section id semester year grade then advisor that uh, sid iid then time slot then there is a prerequisite so these are the various table that is uh, available in the university database because as you know database is nothing but a collection of the various table collection of various relationships or relations so uh, that relations are of these type that is that tables are of these type like classroom table department table course table instructor table so these are the all the table that is available in the university database example now design alternative larger schema so there is a alternative for the design that we can build the larger schema a uh, larger logical design that is available larger structure that is available now let us explore features of this relational database design as well as some other alternative now let us define or explore the relational uh, database design that is what are the relational database design that is available as well as some alternative that is available for the larger schemas suppose that instead of having the schemas instructor and the department we have the scheme so instead of using the schema we have the schema that is the inst department and there are a multiple attribute in this that is id name salary department name building budget these are the various uh, we can say the attribute that is available in uh, this table that is a ins department this represent the result of a natural joins on the relations corresponding to the instructor and the department so there is a, a natural join that is available on the table that is available on the two table that is the instructor and the department this seems like a good idea because some queries can be expressed using fewer joins so uh, this is a good idea because uh, when we apply the natural joins so some queries can be formed or some query can be expressed or some query can be uh, merged using the fewer joins until we think carefully about the facts about the university that led to the year design now let us consider the instance of the instant uh, instant department or the instructor department relation in the figure 7.2 that is discussed right Uh, figure 8.2. Now let's see. Notice that we have or there is a repetition of the this one. So there is a ID that is the instructor department table. There is a name, then salary, then department name, building, and the budget. This is the ID that is uh, one uh, two 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 two. The name of the instructor, uh, and then there is a salary that is available, and then department name, and there is a building name. and if you look on the table look into the table there is a building name and the building and the department name are repeating that is a there is a redundancy in the data there is a duplication of the data and that is not the good database that is available so you said that the building and the budget one for instructor in the table for example the information about the computer science department tailor 1 1 lakh is including in the tuples of the instructor cats season and the budget so if i am talking about the cats this is 1 lakh this is also available with the tailor this is also available with the 
computer science this is also available with the 1 lakh this is 1 lakh this is 1 lakh this is also available for the bank and also for the srinivasan so it is important that all these tuples agrees to the budget amount since other otherwise our database will be inconsistent because uh, if there are more than one value that is duplicate value that is related value if if, if that that appears so this is a inconsistent condition this is a inconsistent database in our logical or in our original design using instructor and department we stored the amount of each budget exactly once so when when we talked about the instructor and the department so there is a storage of the or there is a amount of the budget that is available that is uh, we can available or we can give the demand we can give the budget that is exactly once this suggests that using instructor or the instructor department is a bad idea since it stores the amount repeatedly so there is a duplication of data there is a duplication of the department that is used now next is the next alternative is the smaller schema that is uh, there is a usage of the smaller schema so consider uh, suppose again that somehow we have started with the schema that is the ins uh, instructor department how how we how, how does we recognize uh, that it requires repetition of information and should be split into two schemas that is the instructor and the department by observing the content of the actual relation we could note that the repetition of the information is resulting from to list the building budget and the budget for the instructor that is associated with the department so we observe that there is a building that is also repeated that the department name that is also repeated so we can distribute the database we can distribute the large number of schemas large number of database into the smaller or into the n number of attribute n number of tables right so uh, the, there is a even more fundamental problem that is used with this approach it does not allow to determine where is the lacking of the point to get a lucky special case so uh, that is also a smaller schema that is also available in other words we need to write a case that we say if there were a schema then department name is able to serve as a primary key so this is a schema that is a department name budget so primary key is dependent on the primary key or primary uh, department name is served as a primary key this rule is specified as a functional dependency so there is a term that is known as a functional dependency that shows how to how to adjust or how to use or how to we can get the value that is a primary key value given such a rule we now have sufficient information to recognize the problem of the instructor department schema so there is a problem that is used for the instructor department scheme that is also available in the database design So, because department name cannot be the primary key for the instructor department because the department may need several problems in the relation the amount of a budget may have to be repeated uh, no, note that uh, all the decomposition of the schemas are helpful consider a case where all we need have our schema consisting of the one attribute no in instruct uh, interesting relationships of any kind can be not be or could be expressed so if this is a table now let us uh, take a less extreme case where we choose decompose the employee schema so there is a division of the employee schema there is an employee then there is a id name street city salary and that is divided into two schemas there is an employee one that is a id and the name there is an employee two that is a name street salary or city salary so employee one is a one table that contains two part that is id and the name and the employee two is the next table that contains four part that is the name street city and the salary and name is the same that is that becomes a we can say the uh, that is used to join the two table that is the employee one and the employee two so the flow in this decomposition arises from the possibility that the enterprise has two employees with the same name this is not unlikely in the practice as many culture have different popular names as an example let us assume two employees both name as a kim that is working at the university and having the tuples in the relation of the schema employee in the original uh, design so there is a original design that is also available so there is a schema that is also available in this one so this is the id that is available this is the id that is a kim kim then there is a name then street then uh, main four that is a, a, a street then there is a city then there is a salary and then uh, with the use of the natural join these these uh, two tables are joined together to make the one table to make the table that is a meaningful table 
so there is an employee there is a there are two parts employee one employee two that is available and then that, that will be joined to again form the employee table that is the loss of the information via back decomposition so from figure 8.3 show the or uh, shows this tuple the resulting tuple using the schemas resulting from the decomposition and the result if we attempted to regenerate the original tuple with the natural join so with the use of the natural join we can uh, get the names we can get the table that is also available in this way Next, uh, so there are two parts of the decomposition. One is a loosely decomposition, uh, one is a lossless decomposition. Then, uh, next topic is that is the atomic domains in the first normal form. That is, what are the atomic domains that is available in ER model, and what are the uh, first normal form, or what is the first normal form that is available in the ER diagram? So ER model allows entity sets and the relationship set to have attributes. So ER it's the responsibility of ER or the ER model allows what is the what is the entity set and what is the relationship to have the attributes that they have the some degree of the substructure. Specifically, it allows multi-valued attribute. So there is a some part that is known as the multi-valued attribute that is more than one attribute or more than one value attribute, such as the four number in Figure seven point eleven and the composite attribute that is also available. That is a composite mean that that is also divided into multiple attributes. So in the relation model, we formalize this idea that attribute that do not have any substructure that is known as the atomic attribute. So a domain is atomic or the set is atomic if elements of the domain are considered to be indivisible L units. That is, they are not divided into multiple parts. That is an atomic domain. We say that the relationship or the relation schema R is in first normal form if the all the domains or the domain of all attributes of R are the atomic. A set of names is an example of non atomic values. So what are the various names? What is the set of names that is available? That is one of the example of the non atomic value. For example, if the schema of a relation employee included an attribute children, whose domain elements are the set of the name that is available the schema would not be in the first at normal form composite attributes such as the attribute address with the component attributes are non atomic domain so if i if i combine the multiple attribute if i combine the address with the component attribute that have a non atomic domain the uh, the use of the set valued attribute can lead to the design with redundant storage of the data so whenever we apply the set valued attribute that leads to the duplication storage of the data so there is a duplication of the storage that would result in the inconsistency then uh, next is decomposition using the functional dependency that is how to de decompose using the functional dependency what are the various forms that is available with the functional dependency so in figure or in section 8.1 we note that there is a formal methodology for evaluating whether a relational schema should be decomposed or not that is whether uh, whether whether a relation schema that is available can be decomposed or not this methodology is based upon the concept of the keys and the functional dependency so there are two parts by which we can decompose the thing by which we can decompose the method decompose the relation what are the two concepts that is used one is the keys and one is the functional dependency so we can either use the keys for the uh, decomposition for the splitting up and either we can use the functional dependency that is also used for the splitting up in discussing algorithm for relational schemas or relational database design, we shall need to talk about arbitrary relationship that is available or relation that is a table and their schemas rather than talking only about the example. Now, what are the various explanation uh, that is used with the relational schemas? First one, uh, we use the Greek word for set of attributes like alpha and the Roman term from uppercase that is also available. Then uh, when a set of attributes is a super key, we denote it by the key. A super key pertains to a specific relation schema, so we use the terminology K is a super key of R. We use a lowercase name for the relation. So generally, uh, in every case, we use a lowercase name that is used for the instructor. 
and then relation of course have a particular value at a given time we refer to them as the instance and we use the term instances sometimes uh, there is a relation that is used as a particular value at a given point of time now next is keys and the functional dependency that is what are the keys and how how the attributes or how the table can be divided into the form of or by using the concept of the keys and the function dependencies this is a database model of a set of entities and the relationships in the real world so a database that is available that contains or models or that forms a set of the attributes or the group of the attributes and their relationship so when when we talk about the database model that is a um, how to represent the various entities how to represent the various re relationship they are usually a variety of constraint that is available on the data in the real for example some of the constraints that are expected to hold in a nst database are so what are the various constraints student and the instructors are uniquely identified by the id so this is one of the constraint or one of the we can say the rule that is the, uh, whenever we talked about the student whenever we talked about the instructor that is both are the uniquely or both uniquely identified by their id and every next point is every student and the instructor so every student that is available and the instructor have only one name that is not more than one name is assigned to more than one instructor or the student and each instructor and the student is associated with only one department so every instructor every student is associated with only one department then each department has only one value for its budget so it is every department that is available that has only one value for the uh, budget and only one associated building so every department has only one budget and one associated now these are the various we can say the uh, uh, we can say the constraint that is available or that is held on the university database the first is there is a unique id second is there is a one name one name then third is only one department that is and then the department is only one value for the budget as well as the building and so next point says an instance of a relation that satisfy all such constraint is known as the legal instance of the relation so if for the if all the four elements if the all the four we can say the points or uh, condition will be satisfied then we can say it is a legal instance of the relation where all the uh, uh, we can say that a legal instance is one where all the relations or relation instances are legal instances some of the most commonly used types of real world scenarios can be represented formally as a key there are multiple terms like super key or the uh, foreign key that is also available clearly if no two tuples in r have a same values on a k then a k value uniquely identify the tuple in r whereas a super key is a set of the attribute that uniquely identifies the entire tuple that is a functional dependency also uses to express the constraints this is a satisfied then functional dependency then holds this is also available so we should use the functional dependency in the two ways what are the two ways how we can use them to test instances of the relations to see whether they satisfy a given uh, set f of the functional dependency so we can uh, test the instances we can check the various forms of the relations or various instances of the relation various modes of the relations to see whether they satisfy a given set f of the functional dependency whether 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 the functional dependency have a value that is available that is a f then uh, next point says to specify constraints on the set of the legal relations so first of all check the instances of the uh, relations then uh, specify the constraint that is available on the legal relations first of all checking then apply the constraint we shall thus concern uh, ourselves with only those relation instances that uh, satisfy a given set of function dependency or the functional dependency now this is a sample instance of the relation r there is a room number there is a capacity that is available that is a set of the functional dependency that holds on the schema for the classroom relation however we would expect the functional dependency building room number capacity to hold on the classroom schema so there is a, this is the instance of the classroom relation then uh, next is the boy code normal form that is one of the important normal form that is available that is known as the boy code normal form that is bcn now it eliminates that is removes all redundancy that is a duplication that can be discovered based on the functional dependency so if there is any redundancy that is if there is any duplication that can be discovered or that can be we can say the rectified by using the concept of the functional dependency 
Now, there may be other type of redundancy remaining. A schema R is in BCN as with respect to the uh, set F of the function dependency for all a functional dependency in the F plus of the form A arrow B or the alpha arrow B where the A is also contained in the R and the B beta is also contained in the R for at least one of the following holes. Now, first point says A arrow B or the alpha arrow beta is a trivial function dependency that is a B uh, is uh, or the uh, every value of B is contained in the A. Next, alpha is a super key for the relation or the for the schema R. So, this is a super key that is available for the relation or for the schema R. So, a database design that is available in BCNF if all the members of the set of the relation schema that constitutes the design is in BCNF. So, when we say the uh, database design is in BCNF, if all the members of the set of the relation schema that is available that constitutes the design is in BCNF. So, this is uh, one of the example that is the relation that we have used it is not in the BCNF because there is an ID there is a dependent or that is depend on the one another. The functional dependency that is a department name budget holds on the instructor department, but the department name is not a super key that is available. So, there we can so, uh, so that the decomposition of the department, uh, instructor department name, instructor and department is a better design. The instructor schema is in BCNF. All the non trivial functional dependency that holds, such as ID, arrow name, department name, and the salary. That includes the salary that uh, includes ID on the left side of the arrows and the ID is a super key that is available that is a primary key for the instructor. So, we can combine the we can we can combine the database therefore instructor is in BCN. Similarly, the department schemas is in BCN because all the non trivial functional dependency holds such as department name, building and the budget. Then uh, we can uh, also state a general rule for decomposing that is uh, that are not in the BCNF. Now, next is BCNF and the dependency preservation. That is how to use the BCNF and how to preserve the dependency or how to remove the dependency among the various tables. So, we have seen uh, several ways in which we, can we are able to express the database consistency constraints. What are the various constraints or what are the various ways and that is the primary key constraint, functional dependency, check constraint, assertions and the trigger. So, these are the various primary key constraint that is available. Uh, these are the various constraints. One is a primary key constraint so that is on the basis of primary key we can apply the constraint, we can apply the rule. Then functional dependency, then check constraint, then assertions and the trigger. Testing these constraints each time the database is updated can be costly. So, whenever we update or whenever we use the update that is available. So, however, when we test the constraint that is very costly and if to, it has to be updated on the daily basis on the uh, so that the information can be updated up to date. One way to implement this using the ER design is by replacing the advisor relationship set with the ternary relationship set. Department advisor involves entity set instructor department and the school. That is many to one from the payer to the department. That is a from the department to the that is many to one from the payer that is a student instructor to the department that is shown in the figure 8.15. There is a department advisor, so there is a one to one relationship between the instructor and the student, and there is a one to many relationship between the department advisor to the department. The ear diagram also specifies that a student may have more than one advisor, but at most one corresponding to the given department. With this new year diagram, the schemas for the interchange are unchanged. So, the instructor department are unchanged. Then the next form is third normal form that is a uh, again the important form that is a uh, next part of the uh, normal form. So, we have discussed about the first normal form, we have discussed about the Y code normal form, then this is the third normal form. So, uh, this uh, let us take a break right now, uh, then after the break we will start in the next topic that is the third normal form. So, let us take a break right now. So, come back from the break, now let us start the session again. So, the next topic is the third normal form or how to represent the database in the third normal form, that is the third normal form. So, BCNF uh, require that own, uh, all non-trivial dependency be of the form alpha underscore or 
alpha arrow beta so when we talk about the bcna form that is one one uh, relation is depending on the other relation that is the alpha is arrow b that is alpha is a super key third normal form that is a 3nf uh, relax this constraint slightly by allowing certain non trivial functional dependencies whose left side is not a super key before we define 3nf we recall that a candidate key is a minimal for the minimal super key that is a super key no or the super key has a no proper subset of which is also a super key that is also a degree a relation schema r is in the third normal form with respect to the set f of the functional dependency so when we talk about the relation that is in the functional dependency with respect to the functional dependency with respect to the function f of the functional dependency for all the functional dependency in the f plus of the form a arrow or the alpha arrow b where the a also belongs to the relation r uh, and the b is also belongs to the relation r and a arrow b or the alpha arrow b is a trivial function dependency and alpha is a super key for the r so whenever we use the alpha that is a super key for the r relation and every attribute or the each attribute a in the beta that is a is contained in the candidate key for the r that is a third normal form and then next is the higher normal form that is a what are the higher normal form that is available so whenever i want to decompose we using the functional dependencies that may be not be sufficient to avoid the unnecessary repetition of data that is decomposing using the functional dependency are sometimes sometimes not sufficient to avoid the unnecessary duplication of data repetition of information in certain cases this is the example that is the npd set that is the phone number and the child name must be multi valid attributes and the following are rules for generating the schema from an ea design so we would have two schema that is available one for each of the multi valid attributes that is the phone number and the child name and these are the two uh, multi valid attribute that is available one is the id then the child name then id then there is a phone number if we were to combine on these two schemas then we get id child name and the phone number that is id is repeated that is the same uh, primary key is repeated more, more than one times and there are two uh, other attributes that is the child name and the phone number that would find result to be in the bcnf because all uh, only non trivial function dependency if we do not repeat the phone numbers and store only the first and the last uh, file we could have recorded the dependent names and the phone number the resulting would lead to the they would correspond to the 512555 1234 so because normal forms are not sufficient to uh, perform the operations there there are uh, multiple theory that is also available in the defined in the 8.6 and the 8.7 now next up is next topic is functional dependency theory that is what are the various functional dependency theories or what is the theory that says that uh, various functions or the various relations have a function that is depending on each other that is a function dependency theory so we have seen in our example that is useful to be able to reason systematically about the functional dependency as a part of the process of testing schema for the bcnf or 3nf so there is a function dependency theory that is also available so uh, we have discussed about the bcnf we have also discussed about the 3nf in the uh, last topic now first is first part is a closer of a set of the functional dependency that is how to find the closer of a set of the function dependency so we 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 shall see that given a set f of the functional dependency on a schema we can prove that certain other functional dependency also hold on the schema we say that the functional dependency are the logically implied by the f so what are the functional dependency that is logically implied that is logically followed by the f when testing for uh, normal forms it is not sufficient to consider the given scenario consider the given set of functional dependencies rather than we need to consider all functional dependency that holds on the schema so when whenever we use the functional dependency f of the r that is logically implied on the functional dependency every instance that satisfied f also satisfied the mode so if the every instance every major component that is also satisfied that is then only the condition will be satisfied to the schema suppose we are giving a or we are given a or we are given a relation schemas r that is a a b c g h i and the set of the functional dependency that is a a r o b a r o c c g r o h c g r o i and the b r o n the functional dependency is a is depending on the h a is b a is c c g h c g i then b h that it is logically implied that the a is arrow to the h because c then c g h then c g i again i then b h so a is uh, depend on the b and b is depend on the c so 
in a logical sense uh, if a is equal to b and the b equal to c then a equals to c so in the same way if a arrow b that is a is depend on the b and the b is depend on the h so logically implied a is depend on the or it belongs to the h that is we can uh, show that whenever a relation satisfied our given set of functional dependencies a arrow h must also be satisfied by that relation suppose that t1 and the t2 are the tuples such that t1 a is equals to the t2 a suppose we are given uh, that a arrow b which follows from the definition of the functional dependency that what is the that that uh, t1 b equals to t2 b then uh, there is a given that b arrow uh, uh, h it follows from the definition of the functional dependency that is a t1 h equals to t2 h now what is the axiomians or the rules of inference that provides a simple technique for reasoning about function dependency that is uh, it provides a various techniques or is provide the simple technique or the simpler techniques for the reasoning or uh, that is what is the reason about the functional dependency how to how to generate the or how to follow the functional dependency in the rules that follows we use the greek letter that is the alpha beta gamma etc and using the roman letter from the beginning of the attribute like alpha b and uh, that is used to denote the alpha and union beta then uh, by applying the rules that is repeatedly we also find the f plus that is given uh, that that collection of rules is known as the armstrong axioms in honor of the person who proposed or who first first proposed it that is a armstrong axioms now what are the various rules that is used first is the reflexivity rule then augmentation rule then transitivity rule so these are the three rules of the armstrong axioms that is used one is a reflexivity um, a reflexivity one is a augmentation one is a transitivity now if alpha is a set of the attributes and uh, beta belongs to the a then the alpha is belongs to the b that holds that augmentation rule then uh, that is if the alpha belongs to the b holds and the y is a set of attribute then y is arrow b that is the y belongs to the y b that is a gamma b then transitivity rule then uh, that is if uh, alpha belongs to b and the beta alpha belongs to beta and the beta belongs to gamma then automatically uh, the transitivity rule says that the alpha belongs to the gamma Armstrong axioms are strong because they do not generate any incorrect functional dependency. That is, they are strong or they are correct, but they do not generate the unnecessary unnecessary functional dependency on the sums, on the uh, items, on the relations. They are also complete. That is, the Armstrong axioms three rules. That is, the augmentation rule, transitivity rule, and the reflexivity rules. They are complete because for a given set of function, they allow us to generate all f plus. now although armstrong axioms are complete it is tiresome to use uh, them directly for the computation of f plus to simplify the matters further we list additional rules so it is possible to use the armstrong axioms to prove that these rules are sound now what are the various rules that is available there is a union rule there is a decomposition rule there is a pseudo transitivity rule so these are the three rules that is available union rule uh, pseudo transitivity rule and next one is decomposition now this is a arrow h and uh, since a arrow b is belonging to the b arrow h so automatically this is a arrow h now what are the various closures or what is the meaning of the closure of the attribute set so when we say that the attribute b is a functionally de determined by uh, alpha if alpha is uh, belongs to the b to test whether a set alpha is a super key we must devise an algorithm for computing the set of the attribute that is functionally depend or determined by the alpha one way of doing is to compute the f plus that is uh, take all the functional dependency with the alpha as the left hand side and take the union of the right hand side so this is one of the form that is f plus equals to alpha or the result equals to a this is algorithm that is defined the first time we execute the repeat loop to test each functional dependency the first time it is used to repeat the terms that is used for the uh, functional dependency we find that a arrow b that is a belongs to the b and a arrow c that is a, uh, a also belongs to the c then c g arrow h that is c g also belongs to the h and also belongs to the i the second time that we execute the repeat loop no new attributes are added to the result and therefore the algorithm terminates now 
these are the various algorithm closer the, uh, this is uh, the algorithm that is also defined that you have to study it about the algorithm that is what is an algorithm for the closer now next is canonical cover that is how to use the canonical cover or what is the usage of the canonical cover so suppose that we have a set of functional dependency that is f on a relation schema whenever a user performs an update so whenever a user performs there is an, any update on the relation the database system must ensure that the update does not violate any functional dependency so there is no violation of the functional dependency that is available that is all the functional dependency in the f are satisfied into the new database state that is every functional dependency that is available that belongs to the new database state that is available in the functional dependency now we can reduce uh, the effort spent in checking for violation by testing a simplified set of functional dependency that have a same closer as the given set an attribute of a functional dependency is just uh, said to be extraneous if we remove it without changing the closer of the set of the function dependency so if we close them or if we remove them without changing it to the function dependency the formal definition of extraneous attribute is as follows that is consider a set f of the functional dependency and the functional dependency that is the alpha belongs to the beta in the f so now there is a attribute a that is extraneous and then attribute a that is also extraneous in the b this is also algorithm that is how to use the canonical cover now next is uh, looseless decomposition that is what is a looseless decomposition and how to apply the looseless decomposition so whenever we say that the looseless decomposition that is if there is no loss of information by replacing the two relations so if i want to replace the two relation with new relation that is there is no loose uh, loss of the data that is known as the looseless decomposition then dependency preservation that is how to preserve the dependency or how to uh, remove the uh, or uh, dependency or how to secure the dependency we can say by using the ad hoc approach that is available in 8.3.3 that is how to remove the uh, preservation or how to remove the dependent preservancy now what are the various algorithm for the decomposition that is the main part that is what are the various algorithm that is used for the decomposition so uh, it's uh, your choice larry shall i start right now this these algorithms or this is a theoretical topic that's why i'm asking or shall i stop over here and, uh, you have to study with these theories or shall i continue with this algorithm for the decomposition Yes, Larry. Shall I continue with the session, or shall I stop over here? All right, ready, but study, study, because this is a theoretical topic. Uh, you have to study hard, ask the doubts as 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 much as possible, because this is a theoretical topic. You have to understand each and every line. That's why uh, I'm taking each and every line of the topic. So, if there is any doubt, you can ask the doubt. So, I am leaving this class. All right, Larry. And I am leaving this class here only. And uh, in the next class, I am taking the next topic that is algorithm for decomposition. All right. So, thanks a lot and bye bye.